25 or so minutes. So, my name is D Black Tastic. You can just call me Bobby, and we're gonna dive into Bloodstained Ritual of the Night like you haven't seen at a Games Done Quick event before, uh, especially now since. You see this right in front of me. You guys have donated so much to the incentive of the Hitbox hand cam that we're not going to be playing on that. We're not going to be playing on that. We're not going to be playing on this. None of that. We're going to be playing on a good old Hitbox. Originally made for like fighting gamers, uh, but I've used this for speedrunning. So let me get all set up with the speedrun mode of this, and then we can just... Uh, Head on into it. So uh, time's going to officially start once I count down and movement begins. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So much like the previous game that you folks witnessed where Curse of the Moon was kind of like a nod to the classic Castlevania 3, Ritual of the Night is more of a spiritual successor to the modern Castlevania titles like Symphony of the Night, Aria of Sorrow, and what have you. Um, Ritual of the Night does share quite a few assets like uh, this kind of looks a little bit like Stage 5 from uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, the Gallium Minerva, like you saw Starwind go through. But uh, we're definitely going through it at an extremely quick pace. So Zangetsu is equipped with a whole bunch of abilities that we will get into a little bit once we get some more freedom. Gallium Minerva is actually like a pretty short level, and I'm doing some pretty uh, precise movement right here. So, uh... Ritual of the Night was released earlier in last year actually however this game has been updated with a plethora of content not only do you get a fully featured randomizer mode but you get this guy zangetsu a little red samurai guy also voiced by david hater <laughs> the guy you know the voice of solid snake from glorious games like smash brothers ultimate <laughs> this is vefar and she is down good old first boss and now the setting's a little bit weird here because the music drowns out but while the music grinds to a halt, let's fill the air with the sweet vocals of our host, who hopefully has a few messages in store for us, Nicole. <laughs> I sure do. I have a $50 donation from our friend Mary. Hey, Bobby, have you thought about becoming a hand model? Sending tons of love to both you and Nicole. Good luck on the run. Thank you, Mary. You're so sweet. Aw, shout-outs to Mary. Let's get, some, let's get two All more right. in. All right, we have a... $20 donation from CMAC24. Been watching ever since 2018. Thanks to my fiance getting me hooked. Thanks, Chesney. Love you. Thank you so much for that donation. That's so sweet. And then we have another $20 donation from Echo025. With everything going on, it slipped my mind that it was this time of year. Take my money, please. Thank you so much for the donation. It's going to an amazing cause. It really is, and hopefully you guys are finding a little bit of respite in all this video game entertainment coming your way and all week long. So let me get into a little bit of uh, mechanics about Zangetsu. He's kind of built like an EX character or a special character in like Symphony of the Night, like Richter in Symphony of the Night or like Julius, where he kind of feels like a fighting game character. He's equipped with like an array of special moves that not only zip him throughout the castle, but do massive damage to enemies, burning down the bosses, and also getting a little bit of invincibility. And this little bit of tech that I'm doing is actually I'm chaining slides and canceling with the backdash motion. The backdash is an extremely broken move when it comes to Zangetsu, because not only does it move you through enemies and all that stuff, but it's completely invincible. And when we cancel that into the slide, we retain a whole bunch of invincibility uh, from that backdash. Speaking of special moves, again, this is the third boss craft work. We're just going to be in this guy's hitbox, hacking and whacking and smacking. And we're using all of these special moves that require a really, really lot of mana or MP, the, the little purple bar that you see at the bottom of my HP. Um, so what we do after the boss fight, you see, saw me doing a little bit of galloping there, is that I'm whiffing dive kicks because whiffing dive kicks uh, restores a flat amount of MP. A small amount however um, if you hit an enemy or an object with it you gain a considerable the more amount of MP so the route of this is just basically keep topped up on your mana so you can be able to move effectively throughout the stage do this little whirly bird right here woo! and uh, and effectively burn down the bosses so not only do we have HP rest or sorry MP restoration tactics like that but a little bit into the next screen we are going to be picking up an item called the MP max up where not only does it restore our MP to max, it actually increases our capacity, which is actually really, really good for the latter bosses. 
This is the Hall of Termination, and I'll go into a little bit into the category that we're playing. This is any percent, normal, no major glitches, and for Zangetsu mode, well, let's see. So normally, if you were to play this as Miriam, you would have to go from boss to boss, a certain boss to a certain boss, getting the sort of like, you know, relics and items for progression. Zangetsu isn't about any of, of, of that fluff. It's just from point A to point B, and you just have to uh, complete defeat the, uh, the bosses, but you can do them in any order any order that you so wish, which is why that you see him a little bit earlier on. As we're backtracking and going on to the uh, second, well, rather, not the second, but the uh, fifth boss, let's get a small donation, and if sure. possible. Sure. I have a $20 donation from Mr. Toasty. What a horrible night for a curse, but an awesome night for speedrunning. Thank you so much, Mr. Toasty. Thank you. Again, the name of the game is to keep top up on your MP, and like right after Jeeble, who we thought was an extremely uh, easy boss, uh, actually comes up is Bloodless, where we kind of want to mitigate the RNG that she does by inflicting as much damage as possible within her starting phases, which will actually cause her, oh, I kind of messed up there, which actually causes her to go into her Bloodsteel phase where you actually, yeah, she regains all of that blood that you spilled, and you actually end up having to, uh, you know, burn down, burn it down again. But actually coming up is a pretty quirky boss fight, and you definitely have seen this boss before. Actually, you've seen a, a lot of these bosses before. It's in Drillfus, uh from Curse of the Moon. But uh, if you notice there, I actually imbued my katana with the power of lightning. Zangetsu can imbue his katana with uh, three elements. We actually only use the fire and the lightning element uh, for this speedrun. Unfortunately, the ice element is just not really all that useful. But I digress. Um, Again, we're going to be keeping top up on the mana and just showing really great display of Zangetsu movement. Again, he, he's given double jumps. He's given infinite air movement. You don't really need any special items or whatever to access these bosses or access these stages. So the cool thing about Lightning Element is not only is it a, a weakness for Andreal Fist, but the, but the special attack of the Lightning Element actually ticks for more damage more often than the other special uh, special elements. So we use this in oncoming boss, fight, boss fights, especially um, for Andreal Fist, because the more an enemy gets damaged, they're more susceptible to getting stunned out of their animations, skipping their attacks, and keeping them from flopping around. So we want to stay, you know, literally as close to them as possible, leave them on the close ground, and burn them down effectively. So this is, a, this is actually an indie game. So if you see the, uh, see the portraits that are, like, popping out back there from, like, time to time, those are actually, like, Kickstarter incentives. So people actually pay to, you know, for the alongside the development of this game to have themselves featured on uh, <laughs> on those little portraits or you see like little uh, live action you know dog heads or cat heads those are also you know the pets of people that donated to the Kickstarter so again because of this because of all of that and because of uh, your guys' pouring support you guys actually made this game happen not only did you make this game happen but you guys made Curse of the Moon happen with such resounding resounding support and then we got a little gear clip. Did you actually know that, uh, I mentioned this earlier in the run, that Zangetsu is voiced by David Hayter. So if we call that the gear clip, well, I mean, it is a, it is a metal gear, isn't it? Oh, hey, look at this boss. This is good old Valak. Unfortunately, you're not going to be hearing any hype. Woo! here or anything, but you're just gonna be seeing a little bit of like an auto-scroller boss. Actually, Zangetsu deals enough damage like on his own to just fell this foe within seconds. But if you guys are a little bit unfamiliar with this game, how about a guy clad in red <laughs> jumping on people's heads? You know, bring, bring, bring. It's -a me, a Zangetsu. But this is literally it to the auto-scroller. Like, like it's an auto-scroller boss. I've already done enough damage. So, Nicole, are you there? Can I hear? that sweet voice and can i hear some more sweet donation <laughs> messages absolutely you can i have a 25 dollar from nick nick he says can i get some yo's in the chat good luck bobby and keep up the good work for a great cause and bobby i'm gonna do my best not to butcher this and i'm gonna need you to do it right after me omewa mo shinderu omewa mo shinderu we have a 
$25 donation from Petty. Good luck on your run, Bobby. As always, the brigade has your back, but I have to admit that I think Zangetsu might be more of a katana uncle than the katana daddy. That is some controversial message right there. Well, what do you think? Post your, <laughs> <laughs> post your thoughts in the comments below. Hi, YouTube. Do you have time for another? Yeah, let's do another. Five hundred dollars from Roleplay. Hi, SGDQ. Woo! Staying up late tonight? Are you eating properly? Come back anytime. Good luck, Bobby. Cleave the moon again. <laughs> Thank you so much for that we donation. We are going to. You guys are just ever the more amazing for that. So for all that support and that definitely all the support that's been pouring in throughout this week and I need some more donations to travel the bridge Absolutely, I, will get, <laughs> I will get you some bridge travel Evil. donations buddy. <laughs> I've got a hundred dollars from Evil. AJ Heathen donating is pretty cool I agree it is extremely cool hey we're at uh, Glutton Train it, it definitely looks a little bit different than Curse of the Moon. Actually, a lot of these locales do. But you're going to be seeing a lot of the same bosses um, in, you know, different looks. This is a 2.5D game. And quite interestingly enough, there's a lot that happens on this screen. So for the PC version, uh, there, it's a little bit susceptible to the frame drop. So I'm kind of like timing and timing out the, the chain slide so I don't drop an input. And much like burning burning these bosses down, you can just see how much the lightning element ticks for. All right, we're gonna be uh, coming up to another. Actually, one of my uh, <laughs> one of my favorite bosses in the game. But we're just gonna slide, 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 slide. Heavy attack, slide, 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 slide. The movement of this game is just extremely seamless. And again, for the speed run mode of this game, there's like no fluff. There's little, very little cutscenes to filter through, especially as Zen gets to. Oh, and there goes that nice dog head. What a good one. What a good boy. We're going to be coming up to Bothan, who is extremely fast that you won't even see him. So, fast. so sneaky. You won't even see me. There he goes right there. And again, this guy can be a little bit of a jerk. Yep, and he decides to be a little bit of a jerk during my GDQ run. But again, we, get, we want to use the lightning element to try to get him in a little stun loop. Much like that. He has a pretty, uh, pretty small HP pool. And yeah, you just hear that gallop and like, I need, I kind of need to be topped up on all the mana as possible. <laughs> just so I can like skip any like save rooms or having to backtrack or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Speaking of backtracking, uh, we're actually going to be going through the entrance here for a little bit to head on to the next boss. So, Nicole, do you have one small donation for me? I'm sure with you. I have $10 from Dr. Lupin. Zangetsu has cha-cha slide playing in his head. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Freeze. Everybody Chris. clap your hands. I'm sorry. I just got really hyped for Chris Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Super appreciate the donation. Keep them pouring on in, guys. Like, this is this is an extremely, extremely uh, good game. Hopefully, you guys are entertained by it. And also, uh, we are an ever-growing and all-inclusive speedrun community. If you guys want to head over to Blood, the Bloodstained Speedruns Discord, if you guys ever feel like you know tackling you know Zen Getsu mode yourself, or if you want to take a stab at one of the retro games, Curse of the Moon One or Two, there are a plethora of categories that you guys can uh, pick from and get yourself zoom in. So definitely check out Bloodstained Speedruns. All right, th this is kind of like where like the difficulty spikes a little bit for the game. So I'm going to take a little bit of marathon safety because if I die, I die. The thing about speedrun mode is that since I'm not actually using these uh, save rooms for saving, if I die, then it's a complete game over. Miriam. What I'm trying, what I was trying to do is uh, try to make her do a special attack. She has like a, like a full screen wide special attack where she travels from corner to corner. And I wanted her to go a little bit over to the left because that's where we needed to go. But getting her in the stun loop is actually, you know, a, a lot more preferred. And we're going to switch back to the fire element for the duration of this run. The uh, lightning element has served us well, especially through those 
tough bosses. I'm gonna dive kick spam here, because look, we're just topped up on everything now. And it's extreme. <laughs> That's honestly why I like playing on the hitbox. You just hear that that clicky button ASMR. Like, it's just so nice. And we descend upon the Inferno K for the first time, this GDQ. And yeah, I understand. Like, ironically, the boss of the Inferno K this week to fire. And, you know, I'm not going to question logic. But speaking of not questioning logic, I'm going to slide on these lavas, <laughs> or on the lava, because on Getsu is just, like, super cool to begin with. Again, do not refute the katana daddy coming up is oh boss and i'm waiting for him to give me a good pattern so please let me get some good luck out there in the audience hopefully he doesn't go topsy-turvy on me oh here we go do another 2-2 special move again as long as i keep training these special moves i'm completely invincible and invulnerable okay i guess we got to be painting these fences like we're m bison capcom versus snk2 there we go let me get a little bit of galloping in awesome nicole bobby one donation one donation one okay. five I got $25 from Starwin. Zangatsu's now in his final form, thanks to Bobby using that hitbox. Cleave one, one more time, my friend. Dude. Shout outs to Starwin for such an impeccable performance at Curse of the Moon. Again, deathless. He had some really nice uh, manga moments with a serious time in stage seven. Like, and then, like, it was just really. I'm just honored to, ha to, to have been on the couch for another Curse of the Moon run again. This is the uh, this is the desert. The desert's kind of wonky because again, there's quicksand everywhere, and we all know what we, you know, we all know the preference about sand. Ah! And there's also a lot of a lot of enemies here that can actually inflict status ailments on you. Even though Zangetsu is kind of like pretty OP mode, he can still get poisoned. He can still get slowed. He can still get paralyzed. Like, it, it, and whenever you get caught up in here, it's just not. It doesn't bode well. We're gonna try. We're gonna try as we might to go through here with uh, minimal mix on our armor. And because I wanted to get a top up on MP, we're just gonna visit the save room and go up to good old, old chicken, Arufredo. Oh, yep, this guy right here. He can move extremely fast if he wants to for an old man. He has mastered the art of, 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 of space and time. Look at that, oh my lord. And he, just, he can just give you the runaround. Like, like good old, like one of Master Roshi's trials. Like, you gotta catch bubbles. But he's down. And we're actually gonna be backtracking to the final moments of the game. So, Nicole, if you want to let loose with a couple of donations. Sure do. I have a $500 donation from Sicily. Gotta keep the poetry coming. How about roses are red, violets are blue, omewa no shinderu. Nani? <laughs> Nani? <laughs> um, I also have a $25 donation from Tilo. BT, my bro, Tilo and Mamalo here sending you some Philly love during your bloodstained run. Super appreciate, appreciate you, Tilo. One more? Absolutely. We have a $15 donation from New Flare. Bobby, so awesome seeing the hitbox cam for your run today. The brigade is here and cheering you on. Much love to, to the brigade. I see you guys in there. Found off with that salute. The, the audience is extremely strong. And in, now we have entered the den of behemoths. Okay, kind of like a like a preliminary final area, much like in the vein of modern Vanias, where it's like, oh man, things are so like we're in Little Big World or Little Big. What's that Super Mario 64? Little Big Planet? I, I don't. Anyways, this is Bloodstain. So. Uh, a lot of these uh, enemies are going to be extremely magnified in size, but we're not going to be worrying about any of that. We're actually, we're not going to be worrying about much of these enemies. Like, 100% of these enemies. Like, even the boss. The boss is actually even someone that you're quite familiar with if you watch the Curse of the Moon run, but I don't think we're going to be seeing much of them. We'll, we'll see. If I can just carve a path here. Uh-oh. Right? Let's put your... Let's not. <laughs> so, that, so that was Veil 4, and we are not going to play any of his games today. I am not a betting man. I do like going for safety and consistency. We're just going to keep going. 
Also, it saves about a minute and a half and some change. Oh, all right, what a, what, a, what a good run so far. We're at the final area, the Glacial Tomb, and I'm so glad that Unreal Engine 4 did not crash on me. I've gotten a whole bunch of uh, run kills and, and uh, game crashes just from entering the Glacial Tomb. But the only sort of like platforming thing you have to be mindful of is that like, you know, much like the underground caverns, these, these, this ground is extremely jagged. So um, just kind of have to slide accordingly. Hopefully you don't get wall splatted by the ice elementals because they are joiks. But we're going to be coming up to uh, kind of like the final phases. And let me just get topped up on MP here. And mild spoilers if you haven't played this game, but play the game if you have. This person! Which, you know, spoiler free. <laughs> so I'm actually going to be dodging and deflecting a lot of the attacks. Because when you do, you regain a whole bunch of MP that way. And you actually want to be topped up on your MP because there is a sort of like second phase to this fight where you uh, want to burn down the enemy as quickly as possible. And that was actually a nice Dominique fight. Well, you saw the name there, spoilers. <laughs> but coming up next is Bale. Not exactly the final boss for Zangetsu, but we'll keep the final boss under wraps until the end. But this is initially the final boss. And the way that you have to beat this boss is you have to wait for Dominique to spawn on either of these heads. Green head, red head, or cat head. And... Um, I'm hoping for green head or red head. Green head, let's go. So the hitbox of the green head is actually extremely huge, so I can actually like regain MP by dive kicking within its like throat if I really wanted to. But we're just gonna be keep we're gonna be keeping on with the special moves and trying to burn it on down, all while using the other heads as like dive kick fodder, MP re restoration fodder, so we can just keep hacking and whacking and smacking and galloping. <laughs> right, didn't get the pitch there. All right. And you think that would be GG's, but it's not. You think it would be GG's, but it is not. Marathon safety though, because I, I am big baby. Actually, no, never mind. Never mind. I'm, I'm good on MP. Or sorry, I'm good on HP. I was gonna go back to the save room and like refill up everything, but I'm pretty good. What? It's Miriam! It's the actual Miriam! She's been corrupted! By spoilers! I'll skip this cutscene now. <laughs> so for the final phase of Miriam, she actually has three phases to the boss fight of herself. Uh, she has an inverted phase, and she has a final phase with the great sword. But all of these phases are extremely uh, gratuitous in the health. They all have 4,000 MP. And we could actually uh, cheat this mode if we really wanted to. Uh-oh, we got Balak. Are we going to get cooked? Don't, please do not cook me, medium overall. Yeah, and then we, got to, we have to be kind of conservative on our use of MP here. Because we want to save... For the final boss fight, or for the final phase, she'll cast Blood Steel, and time's gonna be on the final hit. Actually, we're we're we're, we're pretty close. Ow! Time. <laughs> Ow! I got nicked. <laughs> and that was it. Pretty short, pretty sweet, and no fluff in between for Zangetsu any percent. Uh, again, this is no major glitches. There are a whole bunch of categories to Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, including your fan favorite Miriam. And again, there's been randomizer modes and a lot of updated content throughout this entire game. So I'm really, really glad that I was able to show this off to you folks because Angetsu is an, an incredibly good character and extremely fun to play as. So if you haven't revisited Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, please, I implore that you do. And uh, since that's a short run, that's going to be a short amount of time for me. Thank you very much, GDQ, for letting me uh, perform this game for you folks. Let me... Um, let me plug in the Bloodstained community again, where it comes to... Join us on the Discord. Look us up on speedrun.com. And engage with us. Like, I, I, see, I see a lot of people, especially since Curse of the Moon first released, that 
you know, it's a really good game. It hits home to a lot of retro runners. I want to see a lot more people taking on this Bloodstained uh, series. Of course. And uh, yeah, again, that's it for me, guys. So thank you very much. We'll be seeing you guys later. And again, please keep your donations rolling for the rest of the marathon. Ta-ta now. You guys know where to find me. Hey everyone, if you made it to the end of this video, you're awesome. If you really liked it, consider subscribing and watch some more of our related content here. Take care, we'll see you soon, and as always, thank you for watching.